Hello, my friends. It's Rosalie here with a thought, a spot of positivity. And um, welcome here. I hope you are having a good day. Um, and if you do like this video, please um, like and subscribe. And I have a little bug crawling on my phone, but I'm going to ignore it and talk to you. So today is Thursday. So we're going to have thought spot Thursday. And today I'm going to start something a little different in the past i have been um doing like a little bit of a rant on a thursday and i have decided nah no more ranting today i'm going to give you a confession oh my goodness that thing just flew away okay so today i'm going to give you a confession and my confession You'll be shocked and horrified to hear this. I make my kids lunch for school and my kid is 15 years old and he could make his own lunch. But here is why I do it. So I'm very sorry. This is my confession. I'm going to have a little sip of my tea because you must see my mug. It is part of the show and part of the experience. Okay, here it is. This is why I make my child's lunch, even though he's well old enough. And maybe in this little chat with you, as I verbally process, I will think, of, be, think better of it. But I do not know from one day to the next what I'm going to have in the fridge for lunch. And I usually am creating things out of what our leftovers are or the little bits of bread here and there or strange things and it's probably a lack of planning ahead but I just throw something together and I make sure there's vegetables in it <laughs> so with my leftovers or with whatever little bits of bread or little bits of I usually give them a bit of a sandwich and a bit of a something sweet and um I try to make it healthy and I do it for him. So sorry world, my son needs to make his own lunches, but that is why I do it because probably a bit of lack of planning ahead and a bit of thriftiness. And there it is, my confession. Comment below if you think I'm a horrible mother. I'm not a horrible mother, I'm not. But perhaps I should, uh, change that be a little more planning ahead and say okay guy this is what you may use and uh just make it happen for yourself i'm a bit afraid he's gonna not do healthy stuff but as i talk to you and i am a verbal processor i think yeah you know what he could probably do that on his own and so mommy stop being lazy and just make him do it it's not funny how doing it for him can actually sometimes be uh, seem like less work anyway that was my confession and I have one more thing I want to say and that is I like red lipstick there you go a little bit about me now today I wanted to talk about worry and um, some things that you can do to avoid it so I mean I'm not an expert on anxiety and all that kind of stuff. This is just about simple worry and what I have found works for me to avoid it. And I'm going to say how to avoid worry, worry roads, because I like to think of my mind as having like a little, it's a little forest in my mind. And I, um, as I walk along, I can choose this path or the next path. And as you can, as you make, um, paths you can actually wear wear a path um through the forest that you've been using a lot so you find if you have certain thought patterns um that you've walked along many a time um they become like well well-worn paths and you can go, get down them more quickly than you might have done at the beginning so um wearing a path down a road of worry in your mind if that makes sense as an analogy um that it becomes easier and easier to worry and to remember that thought 
um, of the outcome that you were dreading and you can go down that very easily if you wear a path down that road. So my first bit of advice, which is working for me, is to recognize um, when you're about to start worrying. Now, I have a little feeling in my tummy sometimes. And I am learning, I might have mentioned this in a previous episode of A Spot of Positivity, um, that I am experimenting with a little technique that I have made up. Well, someone else must be doing this too, but my it's my own analogy. I am somersaulting my worry into expectation. Okay, so um, these are the processes that I used to do that. I don't want to let that thought become a track down which my my thoughts will wander in my force of my brain um, to start giving way and giving room for worry in my life because it's actually really crippling. I don't mean nothing bad ever happens. I just mean worry doesn't help. It's like you'll get through today somehow and um, hard things happen. I really, as I say, I'm not an expert in all kinds of mental health things or anxiety or all that kind of stuff. And I have, I know that for some people, this is much more complicated. I'm just talking about what has worked for me. Okay. So, um, one thing that's worked for me is writing down my thoughts, journaling things. Um, sometimes I look back in my journals and I have, they're very messy because I'm like really upset or whatever. But it helps me write down my thoughts. I like to choose to imagine a good outcome for situations that feel like they're pressing into my brain right now. Um, so choosing to imagine a good outcome um, be thankful for things that have gone right in your past and actually, um, working on being thankful in advance, even before things work themselves out, imagine like good outcome and be thankful already in advance. Look, I really understand though. Everything always turns out well, but, um, imagining bad outcomes, thinking them on, thinking upon them, dwelling on them is not it's not helpful it's like you're already upset in advance you know if I say, oh i know what's going to happen he's going to do that and that and that i found myself doing that this week one day that's my little confession another confession and i thought you know what it did it was like a self-fulfilling prophecy and i wish actually that i would have thought no it's going to be okay um about the situation. I'm not saying it would have gone completely differently. My attitude is completely different towards it and it makes a difference. The other thing I was going to say, um, talk, oh yes, sorry, Rosalie. Um, thankfulness, being thankful in advance. Thankfulness is one of these higher emotions and I'm going to call it a super thought. So thankfulness really, really benefits you health-wise. And I've said it before, so choose to be thankful. Also, um, talk to somebody. If you are starting to feel like that, if you are starting to feel worried, talk to a friend. Let them encourage you. Don't just dismiss them and say you could never understand. You could never, you couldn't understand. So let them cheer you up a little bit. Let be, if people have words and they maybe even seem, um, uh, patronizing or whatever try to just really listen to the person not everyone's gonna understand everything about you most people will only understand one thing or two things about you you know you might have a really good friend who just understands um, but if they don't understand everything let their little words encourage you um, try to encourage another person and there you go so here we go notice when you're about to feel when you're about to start worrying, write down your thoughts, choose to imagine a good outcome, be thankful in advance, it's a super thought, and talk to a friend, let them cheer you up and try to encourage someone else.
and hopefully in that you can somersault your thoughts of worry into um, a feeling of anticipation and expectation. So I hope that helps you. Thank you for tuning in to A Spot of Positivity. You my sip of tea. Please like and subscribe and join me again.